The clock ticked back and forth above me. It was late in the morning and I fell asleep on my bed watching mindless, late night cartoons, leaving the TV on in the process. The loud sounds from the early morning shows stirred me awake with sounds of explosion and crazy hijinks. I suddenly found myself looking at the clock. It was already 9 in the morning and I already knew that our parents weren't home. My mom was working and my dad was out helping a friend move. Thanks to my luck, my dad didn't even ask me to help, which was a good thing for me. Tired from last night's channel surfing, I was hoping for at least one good scary movie or TV show to pop up, but all I found were bland, boring infomercials. I sat in bed for a few minutes allowing myself to wake up fully before starting a new day. The grating noise of the clock was the only sound that lofted in my room. I gazed around in my room until my eyes hit my bookcase filled with chilling stories that I read many times and now grew bored of. Slowly I got out of bed and walked towards the bookcase and pulled out one of the books. My eyes glazed down at it as I opened it, flipping through the pages. I sighed and put the book back knowing what happens in the story. A ghost haunts and two girls escape by defeating the ghoul by exercising it from the home. Same cliché story. Same cliché ending. All of the books or movies I watched either had the hero or heroine escape and have their happy ending. It is always predictable and quite sad in all honesty. It's one of the reasons why I strive to find new ways to get a good scare. A new horrifying twist would be most pleasing to experience, but nowadays people repeat the same formula in horror, never taking a chance to go beyond the endless cycle. I broke out from my ponderings and then proceeded towards the door to depart from my room. I could make some macaroni and cheese, I thought, craving food after a long night. I made my way to the kitchen. Now I just have to find the box. I instructed myself opening a cabinet filled with canned fruit and other foods inside of boxes like spaghetti, noodles, and so on. I slowly leaned in, digging through them. Where is it? And that's when I saw a hand reach in, grabbing a box that was right next to me. I mentally slapped myself and looked to my left to see my little sister Rose. She shook the box in front of my face. You're as blind as a bat, aren't you, Jasper? I huffed, grabbing the box from her hands, sitting it on the counter. When did you come downstairs? I asked. She watched me. I've been in the living room, she told me. Watching television? I asked. She nodded. Yeah, Spongebob was on, Rose told me. Nodding, I lazily responded. All right, well, since you're here, can you help me? I asked. With what? With the eggs? Mom taught you how to make them, right? Yeah, she did, but I forgot, she told me with a frown. All right, I'll help you. Get a pan, please, I instructed. She started to search. Here you go, Jasper. Thanks, I told her. Now crack them, I continued. What if I mess up? I did once with Mom and the yolk got all over, she told me. You won't, I promise, I assured her. She looked at me nervously, cracking one egg against the table. Told you, I said. I looked at the box on the side. Okay, stir until soft. I read, stirring clockwise. I felt a tug on my shirt. Rose pointed towards the stove. All right, then you... I started, just to hear my phone's ringtone cut me off. I sighed, looking over at the macaroni again and towards my phone. One second. Stir the macaroni for me, please. I frowned. Is it Mary? She asked. Most likely. Okay, but you'll keep an eye out for the eggs, right? She asked. I nodded, going towards my phone. I looked at the caller ID. Yep, it's Mary, I replied answering it. I waited for a few seconds to hear rustling in the background of her phone. Mary? I asked. Jasper? The teen shouted back. I pulled the phone away from my face a bit. Her voice was ear-shattering. Whoa! Excited much? I laughed a bit. Laughter came out of Mary's mouth. I found something amazing, really freaking cool online, she continued. My eyes lit up with interest. Really? Well, if it's a story about the ghost, I already- No, it's not a dumb story. I actually read up on our state. It's an article, she told me. I felt my interest float away, and I flipped the eggs again. You have to be kidding. What article did you find? The one where the farmer gets his leg cut off by his farming equipment? I asked. No, Jasper. I swear, this is actually interesting. She shouted, getting aggravated, wanting to tell me. I stopped for a second. All right, but I bet I've read it before. I replied, looking at Rose, who stared, her eyes filled with curiosity. I heard Mary let out an annoyed groan. Great. Now I can't. Mom's asking me to tend the garden stuff, she mumbled harshly. Okay, tell me later. I'm going to have to. Be sure to have your laptop out. All right, bye, I finished. I heard her mom shouting from her room. 
and she groaned again. Bye, she told me, hanging up. I moved the phone away from my ear, placing it in my pocket. Rose started to stir the macaroni again. I looked into the pot, noticing the macaroni was soft. All right, good job, I told her. I lifted the pot and poured the water out into the sink. What was she talking about, Jasper? Rose asked suddenly. I shrugged. She didn't exactly get to the point, I replied, hearing Rose turn off the oven. I'm sure it's interesting, she told me. I brought the pot back to the stove, staying silent. Maybe, I responded. We went silent for a few seconds. All right, uh, get the cheese, I said, changing the subject. She grinned widely. I couldn't help but feel somewhat curious in what Mary was going to say. It's been a long time since I actually heard her so hyped up about something. Maybe it was something I never read before. Later during the evening, I was back in my room, my phone next to me. I had my eyes glued to the laptop screen, staring at the search bar. Finally, to my relief, my phone started to vibrate. My eyes snapped away from my laptop, and my hands quickly scrambled towards the device, answering the call. Hello? I asked. Some exhausted pants were heard, and it ended with the sound of a door slamming. Hey, Mary! I started, just for her to interrupt. Sorry about not calling earlier. I sort of had to help Mom out with a few other things, she told me. I heard rustling on her line, and she let out a tired groan. I'm so happy to be my bad, she continued. I put her on speakerphone and placed the phone next to me. I bet. Now, uh, what did you want to show me? My curiosity spoke for me. There was a few seconds of a pause. I knew that you were interested, she laughed. I had to admit, I, I did sound as if I truly didn't care during the last call. Yeah, I am. I mean, mainly because you've never sounded so hyped for something before, I responded. Well, duh. It's an awesome thing. All right, search up West Virginia Abandoned Places, she told me. My fingers immediately went towards the keys, typing it all in quickly. Did you type it in? She asked. Yeah. Which link? I asked, seeing multiple links. First one, she replied, her voice filled with excitement. I brought the mouse towards the link, clicking on it. And soon enough, I was brought to a website. It had a bland red and gray background with text, even pictures. Some of a little boy with an older man. What is this? I asked Mary. I heard her clicking as if going onto the website herself. This is Gran's magic show. I started to scroll down to view some of the text under each picture. I stopped at the first picture, the one of the building. It had a large sign next to it, and people were walking inside. Each of them had old hairstyles and happy expressions. Gran's magic show. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Go ahead and read the text, she told me. I blinked, starting to read. Grand's Magic Show, 1964 Main Road, West Virginia. This was the building in which the events took place. The building was decorated with beautiful red curtains, wooden flooring, each board polished to shine brightly with cement underneath. Wonderful gray walls painted with vibrant red circles. The building was huge, like a giant hotel, with a large decorated stage for the magician himself in the upstairs area. I read out loud. That was back in 1964, I said, rubbing my chin. I heard a hum from Mary. Exactly. This is interesting, I replied, scrolling down towards the next picture of the child and the older man. Um, Gran and his boss, Louis, 1965. Gran, age 12, was very talented in magic for his age and was hired by Louis in 1963. It was given the alias Papa Grand as a stage name. Grand was a rather tempered child who normally stuck next to Louis until 1993 when he passed away. A new boss was hired later on, I read. I have to laugh at the nickname, though, she snorted. I tapped my finger on my laptop. Yeah. But still, what's your point? I asked her. Just read on, okay? Next picture should give you a hint, she replied. I tilted an eyebrow, scrolling down to find a picture of people running out, fear written on their faces as they ran out of the doors. 1993, Grand's Last Magic Show. People ran in fear of the events which happened inside. This picture was captured during the event. The building is now fenced in, I continued. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. The building is about to be explored, she told me. I stared and thought. Um, Jasper? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking. Um, I was, uh, how did you find this? I asked. Like I said, I was searching up abandoned places that was in the state. So I sort of dug into the old links and found the link to this website. No, aren't you going to thank me? Thank you for what? For finding something for us to do, 
she replied. I stopped. Who said I wanted to do this? I mean, sure, it's interesting, but Jasper, you're so lazy. Main road is a good 10 minute walk, or are you just scared? She teased. I thought for a moment. Fine. Uh, what time? I asked. She let out a cheer of victory. Yes! 2 p.m. tomorrow. I'll be at your house then, she told me. I picked up my phone. Okay. See you then. Bye, she said, hanging up. I moved my phone away from my ear and hung up, placing it on my desk. I went silent looking at that last picture on the website. I closed the lid of my laptop. I did feel rather... curious. Seconds later, I heard a car door slam and Rose ran out of her room. Going down the stairs. Mm. Mom must be home. I slowly got out of my bed, making my way out of my room. Downstairs, I heard my mom yawn loudly, closing the front door. Mom! Rose shouted cheerfully. I walked down the stairs and saw her. She removed her jacket and placed it on a chair. Hey, sweetie, she grinned, messing up her hair. She looked slightly dark under the eyes, more likely tired. Mom, you're home, I said, walking up to her. She nodded. Yeah, the office is making me work a little later than normal, she replied. I see. She reached into her purse, pulling out her phone. Speaking of later than normal, your father texted me saying that he'll be home about six tomorrow. He still has a ton of things to do over there. In the meantime, what have you both been doing? She asked, walking into the nearby bathroom. I pulled out a kitchen chair and sat down, rose by the door. We made macaroni and cheese. I just watched cartoons for a while, and then I decided to go upstairs to my room, Rose told her. Is that all you ate? Mom replied. I leaned on my arm board. No, I've been snacking. Jasper ate a few small things, but nothing big, because he's talking to Mary and was doing chores, Rose said. Oh, and what were you and Mary talking about, Jasper? She asked. I started to tap my fingers on the table. Uh, well, she's coming over tomorrow and stuff. We talked about, um, abandoned places and such, you know, the usual. I responded. She is. What time? About two. Uh, we're going to go to a few places and then we're going to come back home. I see. We'll take Rose with you. I don't feel as if she's safe alone, she told me. I froze. Whoa. Wait, what? Take Rose with me? I shouted. Rose frowned a bit. Is there a problem with that, Jasper? She asked. Yeah, I thought tomorrow was your day off. It's only supposed to be Mary and I. The bathroom door opened and Mom walked out, her face clear of makeup. Well, I have to work tomorrow because someone else is sick. So I have to take her place for the day, she replied. Rose crossed her arms. Mom, I... No, Jasper, don't argue. Take her with you. Fine, I said in defeat. My mom was rather paranoid with my little sister. She can't be anywhere alone. And you feel like the babysitter. Before I knew it, it was 11. I was once again in my bed, reading through the same website once again. I wanted to find out more about him. I bit my lip, clicking on more images. And of course, dozens popped up. One of Grand back in 1965. From the looks of it, he had, uh, he had cut an actress in half. Of course, when it comes to magic, the actresses and actors always had a way to be safe during it all. I clicked on another picture. It was an old map of the building's location. It had Main Road going around it. Okay, so it's by Main Road at least, but in that exact location now, it's nothing but a forest. I wonder if it's still standing. I rubbed my chin, reaching over to grab my phone. I went to my text and started to message Mary. Mary, do you even know if it's still standing? Sent. While I waited, I continued to click picture after picture until I stopped, seeing an image of Grand back in the 90s. Unlike most of the pictures of him as a kid, in this picture, he just looked... depressed. Like all that happiness just vanished. I heard my phone vibrate and I looked at the message. Yeah, it's still standing, but I bet it's damaged and such. So, are you ready for tomorrow? I started the message back. Oh, I just saw an old map of the location. It's surrounded by the forest now, right? Oh, and dot dot dot. Rose is going with us, said. Yeah, be ready for a small hike through the forest. What? Why is she coming along? I mean, 
it's not a big deal, but s still. I know my mom is forcing me. She's too worried about leaving her alone. Sent. All right, I understand. See you then. I'm going to bed. Night. Night. Sent. I finished texting her, placing my phone back onto my desk. I pushed the power button on my laptop, shutting it off. My eyelids started to droop and everything eventually became black. The next day pretty much consisted of making breakfast, doing the chores I needed to do, and finally, I went into my room and grabbed everything I possibly needed. I gently placed things that I might need into my backpack. Alright, some of the snack on, some water, flashlight. This should be good. I checked over everything I had. Now I would just have to wait for Mary. I huffed, getting up from my position. I bent over to grab my phone, sliding it into my pocket. Silently, I made my way out of my room, sliding the bag over one of my shoulders. Rose was downstairs. She had grabbed her jacket and slipped it on. I walked towards her and pulled out my phone. Where are you? I texted, hoping Mary would reply fast. I'm down the street, she replied seconds later. All right, we're ready and such. I also packed a bag for us as well, sent. Great, I'll be there in just a few minutes. Okay, sent, we messaged. I slid my phone back in my pocket and looked at the door. Hey, Jasper, Rose said. What? Where are we going? Uh, we're just going to go check out something. It'll be fun. I replied, tapping my foot impatiently. She went silent. Eventually, Mary arrived. She knocked on the door and I allowed her inside. Okay, let's get out of here, she said quickly. I walked out of the house. Rose followed behind, closing the door slowly. First of all, what did you pack for us? Um, some food, water, flashlight. Awesome. Sounds about good. Now, aren't you excited? I'm very curious. Close enough. What about you, Rose? Mary asked. Rose lifted an eyebrow. I don't even know where we're going, she replied. Mary gave me a look as we started to walk. Well, it's going to be cool. You like abandoned things, Rose? She asked. Rose shrugged and went into the middle of us. Kinda. I mean, it's okay. I don't like ghosts and most abandoned places have ghosts, right? Nah, nah not exactly. Where we're going, we're only going to be there for an hour or so. Oh, they said. We all pretty much talked until we arrived at Main Road. I looked at the tall trees that towered over us. Mary took a deep breath, taking a few steps into the brush of nature in front of her. If I remember, we should keep going forward and we should run into a fence, Mary mumbled. And climb it? Rose asked. I nodded. Most likely, but who knows? I mean, they might actually be torn down from the elements, or either way, we'll get in. Yeah, because I didn't walk all this way for nothing. Really? You're complaining about walking for ten minutes? Mary snickered. I growled in annoyance looking down. I wasn't complaining. I was just... Bye! Mary's voice sounded far away. I looked up to see her walk deeper, farther from me. Rose followed close behind her. I raised my arms in the air. What the heck? I shouted. I heard her laugh. Come on, Jasper! I groaned, stepping into the brush of weeds and other plant life, some of which reached up to my knees. I struggled to run in there thanks to it being rather thick. Yeah, well, thanks for leaving me behind, I said sarcastically when I caught up to them. Then you should have kept up with me, <laughs> she laughed. What? I just looked down for a second. Still, should have kept up. I felt a little annoyed. Minute after minute passed. I groaned, bringing my hand up to my bag, taking it off my shoulder slowly. Mary and Rose stopped after hearing me place it on the rock. Water break? She asked. I nodded, taking a large container out. Hey, remember to save some for us, Mary frowned. I swallowed the little amount of water that I had in my mouth, closing the lid. I know, I said, holding it out. She quickly grasped it on her fingers. So how much further? I questioned. Mary wiped her mouth, handing the container towards Rose, looking around. We should be close by now, she responded. I felt a sort of cheer go through my body. I reached over, grabbing the container from Rose, who held it out. I gently placed the container back in my bag placing it back over my shoulder. We have to keep moving, she said, starting to walk once again. Rose looked at me. My legs are sore, Jasper, she told me. I started to walk once again. I know how you feel, I responded. Wow, you can tell that you're both siblings, she teased. I rolled my eyes and soon enough, Mary stopped. And her eyes lit up. 
I tilted my head and looked at her. Uh, Mary? Do you see it? She asked. See what? I asked. She pointed towards the front of us. I looked. And to my surprise, there was a fence. We made it! We finally made it! She shouted, running towards the fence fast, ignoring the multiple weeds around us. Rose and I looked at each other and started running ourselves. And then we were in front of the fence. The fence appeared to look like a bush. The plant life covered it like a blanket. From the looks of it, it was, it was rather complicated to climb. Mary walked up to it, observing. Dang, Rose said, getting close up. Mary put her hand on the vegetation. This might be difficult, she told us. Yeah, so Sue's going first. I'll go last, I said, looking at them both. Mary looked at Rose. I think I should go up first, then Rose can go, she told us. All right, well, be careful, I told her. She nodded and gripped the fence tight. Each time she climbed, I expected her to lose her footing. I stayed behind her just in case. God, it's harder to climb than I thought, she said, lifting her hand up to grab a hold of the vegetation and the fence underneath. Almost there, she shouted, moving her foot up over the plant life, trying to feel the fence through it. Jasper, I'm sort of scared to climb this, Rose whispered. I looked down at her and gave her an assuring smile. Hey, I'll be right behind you. I'll catch you if you fall. Mary will be on the other side, too, I assured. Rose sighed shakily and looked up to see Mary going down the other side of the fence. I heard her grunt as she dropped to the ground. All right, Rose's turn, Mary shouted from the other end. I looked over at Rose, who grew a tough posture. I can do this, she said, starting to climb the fence slowly. I stayed behind her. I could hear her inhaling air deeply, trying to stay calm and balanced. She reached up to grasp the vegetation, just for her foot to slip. She let out a scream of fear, and I quickly caught her in my arms. She shook, terrified. Well, is she okay? Mary shouted from the other side, hearing the scream. I looked at her and rubbed her back. Breathe. It's okay. Almost made it. I tried to calm her. Jasper, she started. Is everything okay? Mary asked again. Everything's fine. She just lost her grip, I replied. Is she okay? Yeah, it scared her though. Uh, all right, well, I'll try to hurry. You have to see this. I looked at her when she was finally calmed down. Ready to try again? I asked her. She looked down. Yeah, but can you help? She asked. I nodded. Of course. I picked her up with a grunt, lifted her high so she could have less to climb. There. You have a good grip now, right? I asked. She nodded, starting to climb up slower. I could feel a sense of relief when she finally went over the top, going to the other end where Mary stood, waiting for her. Did you make it? I asked. Yeah, your turn, Jasper. I raised my hands, clutching the fence tight. Moving up slowly, one foot after another, I gripped the top, and soon enough... I made it over the old fence. My feet hit the solid ground and I turned around. Rose and Mary were staring at the very old building. My eyes widened at its appearance. The paint that was on the outside was chipped immensely, revealing the brown bricks underneath. Vines, much like the fence, had taken over most of the building. The windows were boarded up, the windows above too high for us to get to. They were busted out and Mary's grin widened along with my own. This was an amazing sight. Come on! We have to find a way inside, Mary said, her voice cheery. I walked over and nodded. I'll go check the back. Jasper, Rose and yourself, you should check around the sides of the building, she instructed. I groaned. Who made you the leader? I asked. She pushed me gently. I'm the one that found out about this place, she said teasingly. Rose giggled. Fine, I told her. She grew a slight smirk, and she started walking towards the back of the building. I looked down at Rose. Left or right side? Rose asked. I shrugged. Let's just check the left, I replied, going in that direction. As we went around the building, twigs snapped under our feet. The breeze that once blew the trees had vanished, making everything a little quieter. I got close to the side of the building, looking at each window. I rose my hand up to a board on one, pushing it. Didn't even budge. If anything, it felt as if there were more boards on the other side of it. Rose walked over towards the one next to it, getting the exact same thing. They, uh, they have to be boarded up on the other side too, I told her. She nodded. The right side now? Rose asked. 
I nodded. I doubt we'll find anything different, I replied, going around the corner towards the back once again. I went towards the right side, and Rose followed quickly behind. Much like the left side, the windows were boarded up. I made my way slowly over to them, reaching up to push like I had on the left, and just get the exact same response. I growled. My God, please don't make this trip for nothing, I groaned, going towards the front just to hear a noise followed by a cheerful cry. Mary? I asked, going around the corner just to see her climbing up through a window. My eyes widened in shock. Mary walked over. How did you... It was loose, Mary replied. Loose? But the others were... Just fine? No, boarded up from the other side too, I think. That this one had only one side boarded up, and it made it loose, she told me. What? Either way, we have an inn. She smiled, going inside. Rose climbed through next. I climbed in last. My feet slowly touched the wooden flooring, and I looked around. The room that we were in had a bed. Its sheets were tattered, and the room was an ungodly mess. The floor had to have had layers of dust along with the objects inside. The walls were chipping much like the exterior of the building. Whoa. I said in awe. Mary squealed happily. This is so amazing! She said, going towards an old desk. I could feel my eyes traveling over every object in the room. Slowly I walked towards the closet, which was next to the bed. I tried my best to avoid the multiple objects that were strewn around my path, Mainly the bed sheets, which could have easily tripped me up with one wrong step. Do you find something, Jasper? Rose asked, going next to me. I gripped the closet door, pulling it open slowly because it was old. Maybe, I replied, opening it fully. Inside the closet were dusty old shoes, along with coat hangers and some old ruined shirts at the very bottom. Hey Mary, come look at this, I said. She turned around and placed a small vase back on the desk, walking over. This is cool, she said, picking up an old shirt from the bottom. And suddenly my mind clicked. I wonder if this was a guest room, I asked. I think it is, Jasper, Mary replied. I heard a noise from behind me and I turned. Rose had opened the door and started to leave the room. Mary put the shirt down and I walked towards Rose. Where are you going? I asked. Mary walked towards us, going beside me. I don't think there's anything else to view in here, Jasper. Mary told me. Rose nodded. I had to agree. The room only had tattered bed sheets, a desk with no drawers, and a closet with old shoes and shirts. I peered out the door to see a long hallway with multiple doors. It was dark. Very dark. All right. All right, one second, I told them, placing the backpack on the ground, opening it just to pull out the flashlight. Thank God you grabbed that, Mary said. I pushed the small button on the side, turning it on just for the light to illuminate the hallway. I stepped out. Mary and Rose followed close behind. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to tell you thank you so much for watching, or listening to, or however you happen to get it, tonight's story. If you take a look in the description down below, you're gonna find the link back to the author of tonight's story on Reddit or on creepypasta.com or their respective website. We don't just get stories from one particular place, we get them from all over, which means that if you have a story you want me to read, you can always send it over to me at mrcreepypasta at gmail.com. And especially if you have a book that you want to be able to promote to go along with that, send me over a link to that as well, because I'm always down to help promote authors and their books, like you'll see at the beginning of some of the videos. And a very special thank you to everybody on that Patreon, patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta, especially Ariel Torres, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chumpinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Asia, G. Weevil 3, Diana Krause, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Don Mulemeister, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Bobby Jean Torgan, Dr. Strawberry, The Wormhole, Barbara Macedo, and Vic. Thank you guys so much, and if anyone would like to join them on that list, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. Here's hoping that you guys are loving the horror as much as I am. And sweet dreams. <laughs>